What made uh, Jalen Green the guy you wanted with the second pick? And what do you envision for him uh, as he reaches whatever his peak will be? Um, I guess I'll start with the first part of the question. Yeah, you know, Jalen is um, a uniquely uh, blessed guy. He's, he's, he's a, you know, a transcendent athlete. He just is. He, he runs faster than people. Um, uh, and he's athletic in a super functional way. It's not, it, uh, it's not up and down. It's not, it's not rigid. It's, it's super fluid. Um, I have no idea how high he jumps, but it's, it's insanely high. Um, um, and he can, and he can handle the ball and he can shoot. Um, normally people that athletic aren't as skilled because they can just rely on their athleticism. And so we think that that combination of things, um, of tools just makes him an extraordinarily exciting prospect. So I, I think that's, that's what was attractive about Jalen. Thank you. And the second part? You have to repeat it. It's 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 early in the morning. <laughs> um, what do you envision as he reaches whatever his peak will be? Uh, I, I don't think I I, I don't I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I I don't think I can answer that. Like I, I I clearly we think he can be a really really special player. Exactly how that path plays out or the exact timing of it or anything else is not. I, I just don't know, and I'm not going to hazard a guess. One thing in the process of getting to know him is I do think um, even, I mean, even among like all these players who were drafted, um, uh, his love for basketball um, does stand out. And, and that is something I'm, I'm, I am really excited about. Like he, he gets his work in, he's a gym rat. Um, our background told us that, um, but just, I spent enough, I was able, lucky enough to spend enough time with them during this process to firsthand confirm that. So um, yeah, in terms of his path, the only, the only thing, the only thing I ask is that, is that we get absolutely the utmost effort and, and I'm, I'm confident that we will. Thank you. Danielle Lerner. Did the fact that Josh Christopher has experience playing with Jalen Green and then also, you know, knows KJ, um, did, 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 I guess, did either of those guys weigh in on Christopher or did that factor into your decision at all? No. Okay. And then uh, secondly, um, I know that um, your, your Spanish pick is, is in Tokyo right now. Uh, when do you expect him to be able to, to come back and rejoin you guys and uh, I guess have how was that process just because he wasn't able to, you know, be here and go through the normal pre-draft stuff? Um, yeah. I mean, I think uh, he's, he's played. So one interesting thing about him is he's played a lot. Um, he's, he's very young, but he's been playing, you know, for real for, for two years um, with their A team. So, so we've seen him a bunch. Um, so I think the fact that he, at least for us, the fact that he didn't go through the, wasn't here for, for the individual workouts or whatever, was not, not of concern. Um, and then obviously, you know, it's a great reason not to be available. He's playing for his, for his country's national team in the Olympics. That seems like, you know, an acceptable excuse. So um, uh, in terms of when he's going to join us, I don't know. I think it depends on, depends on their team, their team success, um, travel, uh, <laughs> you know, we live in a COVID world these days, so I don't exactly know what that process will be like. So um, I, I don't, I just don't know the answer right now. But uh, I, we, as soon as he's, as soon as he's done with those obligations, which we're, we're excited about for him, um, we'll have him join us as, as soon as he can. And um, I was able to talk to him for a bit tonight. Um, he's excited. I'm excited. This, it, it, sh it should hopefully be great. Ali Kambajani. Hey, Rafael, um, you, you often have talked to us about versatility and just curious through those four picks in the first round tonight, what, what stands out to you about each one of them when it comes to that? How do they contribute um, to the versatility that you're wanting with your roster? Um, I just, you know, for all these guys, I just think they're really, really talented and they're, 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 they're all players who do things to me 
um, already, they have aspects of their game where they are already like, I think they're likely to already be good NBA players at, at segments of their games. And so given, given their age, the, again, they're all 19. So given the age, that's really exciting um, because I think they're at an age where you can really, really improve. And so, um, so maybe those things that, that they currently do uh, at an above average level becomes really, really great. And then, um, and then some of the other, some of the other things where they need to work, um, that's okay, they'll improve. And, and, uh, and I think they all have, have chances in very different ways um, to be really, really uh, exciting players. And just as a follow-up, do you envision um, all four of them playing in summer league for you this, this summer? Well, I mean, um, Garuba's in Spain, not he's, he's in Japan. So I, I don't know, I don't know what's gonna happen with him, but, but the other three, yes, for sure. And, and we'd love to have him in summer league. That's not to suggest that, that he won't. It's just, I, I don't, I don't have a way of working through all of that immediately. Thanks for coming. Michael Shapiro. All right, we'll move on. Randy McElboy. Rafael, can you talk a little bit more about uh, Shane Goon and the process of, of getting that trade to, to go up and be able to get him? And, and what specifically do you guys like about his game? I mean, so he was, as an 18 year old, he was the MVP of the Turkish League, which is, you know, probably the second strongest league in the, or third in the world. Um, that, that that you guys can do the research on people who've had that level of success at a high level of pro basketball that it, it's a short list and a good one um so um so just he's just already accomplished and um he's 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 unique he doesn't he doesn't really play like anybody um and so i think uh and he's a good bath but he, but having said that he doesn't really have a game that looks like anyone else's. He's a good basketball player. He's a skilled basketball player. He's not just somebody who does one thing. He does, you know, he, he does, he does a lot of really interesting things. And so, um, so we, yeah, we think he, he, he potentially has a chance to be special. We, we, we had him as, as a really, um, uh, as, as one of the guys in this draft who had, who had a lot, who had the potential to be really, really, a, you know, how would I say it? Uh, he has a higher ceiling than most guys, I think. And so, so that's exciting. And, um, and so we were very focused on him. We, uh, we, we did not believe that he had a chance of making it to us at 23. And so we were really aggressive trying to trade up all through the first round. And, and then we, we were able to find a deal at 16, I think is where it ended up being at 16 to, uh, to get him. And so, um, um, you know, we're, 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 we're excited and hopeful for him. Just, just like the other guys. Thank you. Jason Bristol. Morning, Raphael. Um, you know, because there's so much work that goes into this process. If someone told you last night that this would be the hall that you would come out with, um, how would you have felt and did things play out the way you thought they might? Um, no, no, I mean, I think it went a little better than I, than, than I would have expected. I mean, we, we, as I said, we were very focused, um, on, on Sengen as somebody we wanted to try and get, um, uh, or have the ability to, to trade up and, and, and select. Um, but I, I, I would have, if you'd asked me last night, I would not have been optimistic, uh, about our ability to do that. I think we, yeah, I would not have been optimistic. So I was very happy. Um, that, that that occurred and then um, all the other guys too like we, we actually the, the, yeah we it nothing ever falls perfectly um, but um, but yeah we're really excited we're, we're, we're really really excited we we traded in to get an extra pick in this draft we would not have done that if we didn't if we didn't think that kind of all the people we had there were were people that we think you know can add something to us in the short and the long term. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about this group. Thank you. Mark Berman. Mark, you're muted. Well, I thought I was unmuted. I thought I unmuted and it clicked. Oh, here we go. Kind of along those lines, Rafael, how much do you feel like 
your franchise has been improved today by what you've done with adding these four players? Yeah, as a continuation, I think of some of our earlier discussions um, from around the, uh, from June, I think it was June, I don't remember what it was. Um, I, I think more, we're, we're a more talented team than, than we were yesterday. Um, and that's really exciting. Um, but these guys are really young. Uh, they haven't proven anything. Um, again, all we're going to ask of them is that they give us kind of the utmost effort and they really, really work and we'll be patient with them. We will, we'll nurture them. Um, we'll work with them. I, I think it'll be a really fun group, not just these guys, but the guys we already had on our roster. I think it'll be a really fun group to watch grow. Um, yeah, that, that, that's my thought. Adam Spallen. Rafael, you said during the process that the guys you already had on the roster wouldn't keep you from drafting someone. Um, in the case of Green, did it kind of work where the guys that you did have made it a little bit easier to make that pick with him? I yeah. guess to where you thought that, that he would mesh really well with them? Yeah, I do, I do, I do think he'll mesh very well with our current team. Uh, I also think that, like, you know, really good basketball players can play with really good basketball players. And so I, I think, yeah, because, because we think so much of his talent, I think we, we – we're pretty confident that he, that he can play, that he can play with almost anybody. So um, I think that's more a reflection of, of, of the fact that we think, you know, he, he, he brings a lot to the table um, that, than, than anything else. You know, again, I think, you know, I, I think, I think good basketball players like playing with good basketball players and they make one another better and they complement each other. So um, especially in this day and age, I think positionality is a little, you know, th there are exceptions, but it's a little, it, it, it's, de it's definitely not, not, not what it once was maybe, or maybe it was never as important. Right. And I'm just now coming around the realization. Who knows? Jonathan Fagan. Well, along the lines of what you were talking about before choosing four players in the first round all, all the same year, when it comes to team building, it, what are the challenges or benefits of getting so many young people all at once, particularly since you added a few real young guys last year, another 19 year old last year, how does that work for team building? Is it a good way to start or are there challenges that come with that? I, I think team building is a challenging process. It, it, it's, it, people talk a lot about chemistry. Uh, I think that's a challenging concept to define. Um, and I think, I think when you're talking about a team, you're really talking about a collection of people and their personalities and their individual talents. And so I think for us and for this group, the challenge is going to be to make sure that we, that, that we're, um, that we, that we build a really good culture, um, and that, you know, and that we, and that we kind of build it collectively. And so I do think in some respects, having a bunch of young guys is actually great because youth tends to bring enthusiasm and, and upbeat and, and everything else. And so I, I think that's, I think that's welcome. I think, I think, I think our current uh, team is going to enjoy that. I think the young guys are going to enjoy each other. Um, we certainly found that that last year that, that actually as, as, as we got, as we got younger through the year, that, um, that I think the group as a whole had more fun. And I think fun is important. We're gonna work really, really hard. That, that is going to happen. Um, but the way you build a really good culture and chemistry is you have fun along the way. And so, um, so I'm hopeful that, that, that that's the case. I also think the fact that we have some, some really good, really established veterans is a good thing because I think, I think we want those young guys to learn the right way to play to, to have people to lean on. And so I, I, I think the fact that we have a little bit of a mix is, is, is actually a really cool thing. Well, if I can just follow up by being more specific then, is there a danger of development being delayed because there might not be enough minutes now or in the near future for as many people who are all coming into the league at the same time, some of which play similar positions? I actually don't think I, the real answer is I no, I don't think so. Um, we did consider that and, and no, I, no, I don't think so. I think 
the reality is that the players have different skill sets. And so we, we're a team that likes to utilize um, uh, the G League. So to the extent that there aren't minutes in the NBA, you get minutes in the G League. I think I do think minutes are important, but um, but it doesn't have to be the NBA to improve. And so, um, yeah. And so, but that's, that was the case for the group of players. That's literally the case for, for Rockets players going back years and years and years, but for sure it was the case for, for our young group last year. And so the flip side is if you're ready, you're ready. So um, for, for, for JT last year, like he was ready. Um, and, uh, and, and, but I think for, for KJ, um, and even, and even, uh, for Scoot, I think the G league experience was invaluable. Like for KJ, it was his introduction for the NBA for Scoot. It gave him a chance to ease into a positional change. So I think, um, you know, I think we'll figure it out. And, and I, and I'm not, and I'm not worried about it. I do think, I, I, I do think, I, yeah, I, I think, I think all of those guys, uh, will be in a position to be as successful as they can be. Thank you. Chris Gardner. So what about Garuba and, and Josh's game that you like and see them benefiting the Rockets? I, I didn't. Can you repeat that question? I'm sorry. What Did about you, Usman and Josh, the two, oh. 23 and 24, that you like about them? Yeah, so I, I, I didn't hear the Josh part. Um, well, those two have nothing in common. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, so uh, uh, with Garuba, I've, I've already talked about it. He's, he's, I think he's the best, he, he's the best defender I, I personally think in the world outside the NBA at, at you know, and he's 19 years old and he's multi, defensively, he's, he, he'll guard your center. He'll guard your point guard. He's disruptive. He gets steals. He blocks shots. He rebounds. I, I just think, I think he, he potentially could be really, really impactful on that side of the ball. His offensive game, I think is a little bit more in development, but um, he did some really interesting things when he was playing with players his own age. Um, he put the ball on the ground a little bit, full court a little bit. Uh, his his shooting has really improved in the last couple of years. And so I think he's just a really intriguing prospect. Um, with Josh, um, I think he's dynamic uh, um, with the ball in his hands. Um, he's he's one of the best, if not the best, transition players in the draft. I think we probably have the two guys, at least I – I enjoy watching the most in transition um, in the draft were, were Jalen and Josh. And, um, and on top of that, I think Josh has the potential to be a truly locked down man-to-man -man defender. Um, and so, um, so I, I, I think, you know, that th those, you know, I, I guess that answers the question, but, but I, I think that they're both really exciting prospects in their own right. Simone Ali. Do you see yourself signing any undrafted free agents by the end of the night, or are you guys all about done here? Uh, we'll see. Jackson Gatlin. Hey, Rafael. Um, what should Rockets fans take away from the decision to, you know, not only use all three picks you had coming into tonight, but also, you know, going out of your way to pick up a fourth one uh, that was acquired via OKC? Um. I don't know, like, hopefully they like our players. I, I don't, yeah, I, I don't, I don't have a good answer to that question, but we, we, I don't, I don't want to blow you off though. So g give me a little bit more about what you want from me. I guess just with, you know, the spec there, you know, speculation of, you know, are all the draft picks going to be made Would some of them maybe be moved, I guess, coming away thinking, you know, bringing in, for you know fresh faced young rookies you know what should rockets fans take away from that and maybe the direction the the franchise is headed i mean hopefully they're excited that we we have a lot of talented young players um and you know i think um yeah i, I you know ho hopefully that's it i mean I, I do think that we are we're a team that's you know we i've talked about it. i think we're a team in transition we unapologetically we're, we're hunting a title for years and years and years. And, um, that's still the goal, but it's, you know, it, it was, we had a unique opportunity to reset, um, that, that came up, that came about. And, and our goal is to, is to bring in really, really talented players to build back up to that as quickly as is possible. And so that's, that's what we're doing. So to me, it feels very in line with, with what I, think has been a relatively transparent goal. So, um, 
So I, th I think that's the takeaway. We'll take four more. Brian Bearfield. Good morning. Uh, <laughs> how involved was Coach Silas in this, and what does he think about the draft picks? He's excited. Yeah, he's. I mean, Coach Silas is a great partner, um, and so uh, all through the process, um, we kept him updated on who we thought was it, who the players we thought were interesting. Um, all of these players are players that he that we had focused on well in advance of the draft, so he had the opportunity to uh, to watch them. Um, uh, for sure with, uh, Josh and Jalen, um, they came and worked out with us. So he had the opportunity to meet them and, and, you know, and, uh, and see him go through workouts. And, um, I think he's really excited. You know, I think this is an exciting time for the organization. This is an exciting time for me. It's an exciting time for him. So I think, I think he's really excited. Zach Allen. Hey, Rafael, hey, how much credit does this Rocket scouting team get? Because y'all have been able to, you know, recruit, I mean, scout from the other side of the world and bring in talent like Jason Tate. Now you're bringing two more international players. But how much credit does this scouting team get? Uh, I mean, we're all, yeah, we're all part of the same team uh, in the front office. Like, that, this is, this is our job is to find talent wherever it is. Um, I am, I am, Obviously, we we drafted all these guys. I'm really excited about him, but it's you know it's 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 on them and on us for the you know to it's on them to to prove that they were worth it, and it's on us to help them get there. Um, and so I, I don't know that anybody should be saying that we get credit yet, but I will say for 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 our team, um, you know, we work really hard, and um, you know, and we try and have a lot of fun while we're working hard, but we work really hard and you know, and, um, and we have a super diverse group. And I think, I think that results in some interesting things and, and, and hopefully we do a really good job. Ben DeBose. Rafael, you told us in June that you felt like you could easily create room for three first round rookies if need be. Turns out you now have four. Do told you so. still, do you still feel like that you can, um, create room on the roster for four guys or is it a situation where you might need to offload some veterans before the season starts to make room no i mean i, I we're fine but you know that the, well i mean we, we're about to hit free agency and so um but it, we don't need to move anyone so if, if that if the question is do we now have we have we put ourselves in a situation where we now need to make another move the answer is no um, but we're going to continue to look at ways of improving the team and, and making the group more talented and, uh, and creating and creating, you know, and figuring out what the right group of guys is to go forward for the next, not just this season, but for the next few seasons. And so, um, so that process isn't done, but, um, but, but no, we haven't like pinned ourselves in the corner or anything. And last question, Dave Hardesty. Hey, Rafael, uh, this draft was considered extremely talented at the top. Uh, how difficult was this choice for you guys? And at what point in the process did you know that Jalen Green was your guy? Um, I don't, I, it probably wasn't difficult just because I think, I, I do think that there were extraordinarily talented players at the top of the draft, all through the draft. I mean, we, we picked a lot of guys because we think that this was a very, very talented group of players. Um, so it wasn't hard in, in terms of it was fun. Like it's fun to watch really good basketball players who get you really excited. I, I do think Jalen was somebody that we were really, really drawn to. And so we're really excited. Um, um, and he's just, he's immensely talented. And so it's going to be on Jalen and, and on us to, uh, to prove it out. And, but not just him, it's like all these guys and, and the guys on our current roster, we were all in it together. We got to, we got to grow. We got to help each other. And, and we got to get better.